Hey there, class of 2022. Welcome back. By now, all of you should have on your calendar Wednesday, April 7th at 820 at Southmore High School. All of you are coming back inside the building and taking the state mandate ACT test. So if you haven't done so already, designate that date, clear everything off your schedule, and make plans to be here for this important opportunity for you and your grades. Students, today we're going to focus on the reading section of the ACT, and next Wednesday we're going to finish up with the science portion. I want to remind you to continue to check your school emails, your IC alerts, Odysseyware, and Canvas messengers, or look at the school's website, Southmore High School's website, for our study strategies and links. So if you want to go back and review any of our previous sessions, or if you've missed our sessions, go to Southmore High School's website. You can click on March to the ACT Test Strategies, and there you'll see separate videos from each week of our presentations. You can watch them over and over again to make sure that you are equipped for the ACT. Okay, so by now, all of you know that you've got a free sample test to take for the ACT. So this is just a sample test to give you a chance to be exposed to a variety of different questions and concepts that are going to be on the real ACT test on April 7th. If you haven't done so already, you're encouraged to take advantage of this free access by logging into the student.cambridgeed.com. Put your PIN number, which is your school ID or your school cafeteria number, Put that in there as your pen and begin practicing. Once again, this is a paced test where I'm only opening up a section of the test at a time to give you a chance to focus on just one section at a time. Once you get through with that section, I'll be notified. I'll open up the next section for the following week. So good luck and go ahead and spend a little time over spring break. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and take the first two sections of the ACT. And then when we come back from spring break, if you have any questions, Great opportunity to ask your classroom teachers. I took the practice ACT and I saw a couple of concepts that I was unfamiliar with. Can you help me with these? Ask those questions of those teachers. They'll be glad to help you out. Students, the next couple of slides are going to help you make sure that your laptop is ready to go for the test. So take a moment, read through the following items. It's going to help you make sure that your laptop has all the updates and it's ready to go on the test. Remember, if you don't do this, and your laptop struggles trying to download something during the test, that time you're going to miss is going to be vital time on the ACT. So go ahead and do this in advance so that you're ready to go on ACT day. Okay, so if you want to take a moment now in the bottom corner, type in updates. Once you've typed in search for updates, you're going to see a little gray box that says check for updates. Go ahead and click that. Now that may take you a couple moments to download all the following updates and it may ask you to go ahead and restart your computer before those updates are, are usable. Go ahead and do this in advance and it may require you to do it a couple times between now and ACT morning. Students, if you have a Mac computer or any Apple product, it will not allow you to take the ACT on that item. If you'll email me as soon as possible or notify us when you arrive here, we can get you a separate computer, either a laptop or take you into one of our computer rooms. Once again, any Mac product or Apple product is not compatible. <clears throat> Call of Duty, high score. Listen up, gamers. If you have the Xbox Game Bar downloaded on your laptop, you need to remove that or it will kick you off your ACT test. You probably won't get that time back if you do get kicked off, so make sure that you get that uninstalled on your computer. Okay, starting this weekend, students, you need to get your body ready to go for the ACT. And part of that is making sure you get yourself into a routine. That routine should include getting a good night's sleep every single night. A lot of students make the mistake of waiting the night before the test, trying to go to sleep early and get a good night's sleep. Your body's not used to that. And in fact, you actually feel sluggish and tired throughout the entire time of the test. So starting right now, get yourself in a routine and going to sleep early, making sure that your body is charged up for the test, as well as making sure that you guys are eating proper meals, getting lots of, of food and beverages, okay? Also, I want you to ch uh, charge your laptop up every single night. Just close the lid, charge it up on a nightly basis. That makes sure you get in a routine of, of making sure that your laptop is getting all the latest downloads as well as fully charged on a nightly basis. So the next morning, you and your laptop are ready to go. 
I want to remind you that in addition to the March to the ACT, Moore Public School is offering three separate boot camps. You can go to one or go to all of them. They're on the weekends and they're at each site. You're available to go to Moore, you're able to go to Westmore, you can go to Southmore's boot camp or all of them. The first one is going to be Saturday, March 27th at Moore High School from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. On Sunday, March 28th, it's going to be at Southmore High School from 2 to 8 p.m. And then on Saturday, April 3rd, Westmore will hold theirs from 10 to 4. Registration is limited. There are some spots for free and reduced lunch students, so make sure you go quickly to the Counseling Center and sign up for this. So the reading passage can have a massive impact on your score, so let's get started. It's the first of three tests in four sections. You'll take the English and math, and then you'll take a short break, and then take the reading section. The reading section is 35 minutes. It has four passages. It has 10 questions per passage, so a total of 40 questions. So it will take you roughly 8 minutes and 45 seconds per passage to complete it. If you're going to finish all four passages in 35 minutes, that means you're going to need to read and answer 10 questions. That's just incredibly hard and difficult. Know that if you've been struggling with finishing, you're in good company. Passages are always in the same order. It goes prose, social sciences, and humanities, and natural sciences. We know this because they're labeled. Each has 10 questions, which means they're weighted equally when it comes to overall score. Now, if we know that they are likely, we are likely to run out of time on this section, it makes sense that we would rearrange these passages based on our reading strengths. We're going to start with the passages that you're best at. This, the one that you're most likely going to get the most correct on. So the first strategy is to figure out how to reorder the passages you're best at. After you reorder, you're going to start with the passages you're most comfortable with or that you feel that you get the most answers correct with. And then you're going to sacrifice the ones that you feel least comfortable with. So we're going to look at the pieces, not the whole. So just like all the other sections, we're going to sacrifice some of the reading sections so that you can slow down to be more accurate. And as always, when you sacrifice questions, you must be consistent when guessing. I always BG or DH it. When we guess, we guess consistently, consistently and in a straight row. We'll get the answer right 25% of the time. ACT divides their answer choices 25% A, 25% B, 25% D, 25% C. So they don't choose C most of the time. A lot of times people hear choose C, it's mostly correct the time. No, choose the one, go straight down. Sorry, it kind of gets stuck occasionally. So we're going to choose our answers in a straight row. That helps us get the answers 25% of the time. That gives us a little bit of wiggle room. So let's look at prose. Passages from short stories, novels, memoirs, and personal essays. So the reading descriptions can be a little bit overwhelming, so let's break them down. Prose is what you read in English. It's a story. I typically start, say start with prose. You're going to use, you're used to seeing it, you see it in English, it's something that you're very familiar with. Social sciences, anthropology, archaeology, biology, business, economics, education, geography, history, political science. It's going to be something about history or a historical event or a historical figure. You either love it or you hate it. If you love history, by all means, start with this one. This tends to be a higher reading level, and this in Humanities will have the split passages. Humanities is typically about art, um, architecture, dance, ethics, films, language, 
literary criti criticisms, music, philosophy, radio, television, and theater. Um, again, this typically tends to be your higher reading passages and has the split passages. Natural sciences tends to be your science one. Um, this section will typically be the easiest questions. They know that students do not typically make it to this section and they hide the easy questions here. Even if you don't like science, and I don't, the information is communicated in a clear manner and the questions tend to be really easy. I would suggest rearranging them in one, four, two, and three. Let me say that again. One, four, two, and three. But if you love history and do not like prose, then you have a second option. You can rearrange it in two, four, one, and three. Let me say that again. Two, four, one, and three. Bottom line is you have to practice. You have to practice this. You can't walk in there and not practice. Your brain is like a muscle. Just like you practice in a sport, use your brain and create muscle memory. Do this over and over and over again, and I promise you your score will improve. Sorry guys, it keeps on getting stuck. Give it a few minutes. So how do you know what passage to read? We've kind of already gone over this one, but let's go over it one more time. So prose. Comfortable for most students. Stories tend to be pretty interesting generally do not recommend skipping. Social sciences, you either love it or hate it. It might be a split passage. Let me refresh it. Humanities, either you love it or hate it. It has a wide variety of topics and it might be a split passage. Natural sciences is the easiest questions. Scientists tend to communicate pretty clearly and you generally don't recommend skipping this one. You must practice. So if you're scoring, if you want a score of 19, I suggest you guess on two questions or two passages. You need to get 50% correct. Read and answer two passages. This gives you 17 minutes per passage. You will, this will help you slow way down to increase your accuracy in order to be more successful. So when the proctor says go, the first thing you're going to do is fill in your guest answers. If you're going to skip patches, passages 2 and 3, you will number 11 through 30. Remember, you are guessing consistently. You're going to guess in a straight line. That means that you're going to roughly get 25% of those answers correct. If you want to score a 21 to 24, you will essentially do the same thing, but you will guess on one passage. So when the proctor says go, you will choose that one passage and you will bubble in a straight line. You, that will give you 11 minutes and 15 seconds per passage. That will help you slow down and be able to be more accurate on the passages that you are reading. Remember, when we are guessing, we're guessing strategically and we're guessing in a straight line. If you want to score a 25 to 28, that means we're going to guess on half a passage. We're going to do this in several different ways. So there's a few different ways to accomplish this. That will give you 10 minutes per full passage and five minutes on the last passage. If there's a split passage, that's really easy. You can choose passage A and answer those questions. If you do not have a split passage, you will find the questions that you have the line 
numbers or paragraph because you don't have to read the passage to fully understand those questions. It tells you where to look and you can basically cherry pick those out and X marks the spot. And of course, as always, when we are guessing, we're guessing strategically every single time in a straight line to help use or help us with probability and get 25% of them correct. If you want to score a 29 or greater, the only strategy that I can give you is to train yourself to get it done. Get your hands on good practice test. I'm an S216 and I have a great we website for old ACT test. You must practice on speed and accuracy. You have to read every single night. You must read all four passages and answer all the questions. You have to do this in eight minutes and 45 seconds. Train up and add one passage at a time. Guys, it's just like running. If I wanted to train to run a marathon, I am not a runner. I would get up, I would not get off the couch today and run a full 26 miles. That would just be impossible. I would do a little bit each day. Training for a marathon is just like training for the ACT. If I want to get a 35, 36 on the reading, you're going to have to add a little bit each day to increase speed and accuracy each day. So let's get to the nitty gritty. This is a reading comprehension test. Really and truly, when you get to these questions, I want you to think of, the, of your brain and entirely wipe out and blank everything out that you have ever seen, read, learned, or heard before because the only thing that you're allowed to consider are the words that are in the passage. The answers are there. You just have to find them. Don't overanalyze. Read between the lines. Therefore, we want you to slow down and sacrifice a passage or two so you can have time to go back and find those answers. Read the strategies you've probably, um, you've probably heard. Skimming versus actually reading. It's helpful, helpful, helpful for you to actually go in and read these things so you have an idea where to find the answers and the questions. We're not asking you to comprehend every detail, but you should have an idea of what happened. You've probably heard about reading the questions before reading the passage. This is just a waste of time since we're asking you to already sacrifice a passage. Read the questions without reading the answer choices. After you read the passage, try reading the questions without reading the answers. The ACT intentionally puts distracting, misleading answer choices in these answers. Almost as if you are answering this as a short answer. It might not be word for word, and that's fine. The other thing is it will save you seconds of not reading the answer choices. Sorry, I went back. My looming skills are not great this morning. Go to the area in the passage that talks about the subject and find the answer in the passage. Match what the passage says to the correct answer. If you only have time for part of a passage, skip the skimming. Go straight to the questions. Answer the vocabulary and context questions. Answer the questions that go direct with the specific line or paragraph. What happens if you only have time for part of a passage? This, these are where students are going to do three and a half passages. There's something valuable you can do at this time. Skip skimming and read the passages and find the questions that give you the direct lines and move to the correct answer. Never leave seconds clicking on the tile. 
on the clock. Guys, you have to practice, practice, practice. Please come find me if you have questions. I'm an S216. The descriptions of the answers on all the tests are following, so please check out those videos. Thank you.